Hello, I'm Gordon Kilo from Church of the Resurrection in Kalaroo. What if you could have a clear conscience before God? It's always been God's plan to make a people for himself, to live the abundant life he created us for. But the Bible makes it clear that we don't want God's plan. We'd rather our own plan to make things up according to our way. Now, sometimes that feels fun, but a lot of the time it causes pain, hurt, brokenness, guilt, and regret. And it always distances us from God. We cannot live with the righteous God if we're rejecting him. The Ezekiel reading for today describes Israel as scattered, separated, and it's a sign of God's judgment because they've rejected him. Yet God promises to make them one again. But how could he do that? Because their guilt would remain. Their consciences would remind them that they deserve God's judgment. The answer is in the gospel reading. Jesus had just raised Lazarus from the dead. It was a wonderful sign that showed he really is the son of God, the, the Lord of life and death. Now, John records that many believed they put their trust in him when they saw this, but not all did. Some went to the religious leaders, told them about it. They wanted to know how to process this. There's little dispute in the ancient world that Jesus performed miracles. Non-Christian writers talk about them. But they didn't believe that he was the son of God. And so they all describe those miracles as sorcery. The religious leaders had no doubt about Jesus' miracles. They just doubted the source. And all they could see happening was a human-based rebellion against the Romans. And so the high priest decides. John writes this. It is better for you to have one man die for the people. Political expediency beats truth and justice. They don't want trouble with the Romans. So Jesus must die. But God was also at work here. John also records this. Being high priest that year, he prophesied that Jesus was about to die for the nation. Not for the nation only, but to gather into one the dispersed children of God. Jesus' death would be no mere miscarriage of justice. It was part of God's eternal plan of salvation. Jesus would die for the many. Now, last week in uh, the US, a governor said that he was prepared to die as a grandparent for the economic prosperity of his grandchildren. What he meant by that was that if the country didn't shut down the way it's going, and it meant that older people like himself died from COVID-19, that he was all right with that. Well, as a grandparent, maybe he would be ready to die for his own grandchildren. But what about other grandparents? Was he speaking for them? What about people his age who weren't grandparents? Was he speaking for them too? And what guarantee was there that if he died, his grandchildren's prosperity would be protected. There was no guarantee. God's plan is different. His is guaranteed to work. And he's not talking about protecting the prosperity of any of us, but giving eternal life, a clear conscience before him to those who trust Jesus' death and resurrection for them to those from every nation who believe, every nation including our own. Can your conscience be clear before God? Yes. Whatever you've done, whatever separates you from God, Jesus' death and resurrection can deal with it. It pays for it and it will clear your conscience before God. When you put your trust in him, he forgives. The guilt is gone. The conscience is clear. The one man, Jesus, died for the many to make us one 
as God's people united in Christ. Amen.